like to say, either you love baby praying mantis or you love baby praying mantis and you just don't know it yet. Today, we're gonna talk about baby praying mantises, how to hatch them from their little egg. And oh, <laughs> welcome to my life as a crazy bug lady. I love bugs a lot. And so I'm gonna talk to you about them. And today we're gonna talk specifically about how to hatch out your very own praying mantis egg and get those cute little babies that you're just gonna love. I need to put this guy down. Will you hold him for me? Awesome, thank you. Okay, so maybe you already have a praying mantis egg that you picked up from your local hardware store or something, or maybe you're thinking about getting one or you want to do the project, you know, with a class or friends or kids and you're thinking like, how the heck do you even do this? Well, I am here to explain it to you and give you the tips that I wish I knew when I got my first praying mantis egg and hatched out like 300 babies and was like, oh my God, what is happening? Because it's a lot and it can be overwhelming, but I'm gonna make it simple for you and I'm gonna make it so much fun for you because you're gonna be equipped with all the information you are going to need to succeed. So let's begin. First up, you're gonna need to acquire your ooth. Uth is short for Uthaka, and the Uthaka is actually the praying mantis egg. Well, it's the coating that they lay their protected eggs in. Wow, that sounded weird. English? Anyways, this here is an Uth. This is a very small one because it came from my female orchid mantis. Now, it is not fertile, so there will be no orchid mantis babies this time, but you can get the look and see what they look like. The most easy to find and often found praying mantis eggs available on the market are the Chinese mantis eggs. And these are great because they are actually cleared for release for use in pest control in most places, as far as I am aware. Double check with your area before releasing any mantis. But as far as I know, at least in my area, you can release these mantises to use as pest control. So you are not obligated to keep and care for all of the babies. And there will be a lot of babies, so you will be grateful for this. If you get an ooth from a um, far off or invasive species of mantis, you will not be able to release them. And you will have to take care of them and find them homes and people who want to take care of them. So just keep that in mind when you are picking out which mantis you want to get an egg from. Anyways, so where are you gonna get your egg from? You may get them from your local hardware store. I've seen them at like Ace Hardware or um, Armstrong. I don't know if you see them at Home Depot, can't remember, but you can find them at a lot of hardware stores, um, garden stores, things like that. You can also find them online. I just saw on eBay, a lot of the companies just dropped the fresh eggs from spring, for spring, for spring. So there are a lot available on eBay. If you just type in praying mantis egg, you will find some, I guarantee it. There are also specialty mantis sites that will sell ooths. I know I get some from insectsales.com. I'm sure there's other sites. If you look it up, they should not be hard to find. But anyways, let's say you've acquired your ooth. And it's going to be bigger than this <laughs> because this is tiny. Orchid mantis are tiny, but it's going to be bigger than that. So you get it. Like, let's say it just comes like this and you're like, what do I do with it? I got you. So when the baby mantises are born, they actually break through the little gills on the side of the oops and they come out in kind of strands. So to help them come out, you wanna make sure that the ooth is standing upright and raised up from the ground so that the gravity will let the mantises come out safely when they are born. Now, a really good option of something you can do to assure that this happens is attach it to a stick. You could do something like this and attach it to a stick. I've used glue and had no trouble with just a little teeny spot of hot glue. I don't know if everyone would recommend this as it is chemicals going close to the baby mantises. If you don't want to use glue, you could also tie it with a zip tie or a bit of string just to give it a nice place to be stable and sturdy. Oops. <laughs> you'll notice there's a flat side of your ooth. That's whatever it was attached to. And this is the side you'll want to attach to your stick. Like that. Now that you have your mantis egg, ooth safely attached to a stick or popsicle stick or some type of object that will keep it raised off the ground you're gonna need something to keep it in now sometimes these will come with a cup ready to go but sometimes they won't 
I like to keep my oops in an insect cup kind of like this. This one's dirty, don't mind it. But you know, it's a nice small cup that are gonna keep the babies contained in a tight space. It also allows you to control the humidity and moisture inside of the cup, which is crucial as well as temperature for um, allowing the egg or signaling the egg that it's time to hatch. So I recommend using a cup like this. If possible, you'll want to use a lid with this um, kind of fabric-y lining. These are specifically um, meant for insect, insect cups that the mantis can hang off of. If you do not have a surface that they can hang off of on the top of your cup, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have plenty of things inside the cup that they can hang off of. This may be extra sticks or some little um, pieces of stuff. They're really small, but you'll just want something that they can hang off of so they're not all just crowded on the bottom and you know stuck, compacted together. You want them to have a little bit of space, but you, ideally they aren't gonna stay in this cup for long, but it's just something that will be able to keep your egg in a nice temperature and humidity controlled environment, which can allow you to have your ideal hatch time. So once you have attached your ooth to your stick and it's inside a proper cup, with ventilation, did I mention ventilation? Oh gosh, you need ventilation. You're gonna want to house this in a place that will not get direct sunlight. You don't want to scorch your little babies. <laughs> and you'll want to mist your cup. I recommend daily just because I live in a dry climate. I live in a desert. So um, I mist mine generally daily with every few days, making sure to mist directly on the ooth. And you do not want to do this, I would say every day. You don't want to really soak the ooth, but it is important that it does get a little bit of moisture directly on the ooth as this will help make sure that the proper humidity is maintained inside of it. But generally every day you'll want to kind of mist around your cup and the sticks and the substrate and I use a mister like this and I just kind of would like go like that to my cup and then every couple days directly on the ooth to keep the moisture up. Now you will want to keep this cup in a warmer area like I said no direct sunlight but you will want to keep them not in like your basement or somewhere where it's very cold. If it is very cold in your area you may want to keep it near a heat mat or heating pad um, not pressed up against it but close just to make sure that it maintains a nice warm cozy temperature because you know mantis eggs are not meant to hatch in the middle of winter so if it's really cold you're gonna have trouble hatching your egg and you may wonder why it's taking months and months to hatch which also if you want to postpone the hatching of an egg you can actually put it in the refrigerator and it will cause it to not hatch until you are ready to bring it out and have it get nice and warm and hatch but yeah so now that you have your cup and your egg and it's in here you have the nice sealed environment so you know what you're gonna do you're gonna mist it daily and you're also going to make sure it's nice and warm and not in direct sunlight you are going to want to check on it very often to make sure that you don't have the babies out there because once they come out you are going to need to act pretty quickly or else they will cannibalize each other so make sure that you're checking on the eggs a couple times a day like you just you don't want to forget about it for a week because you know if the babies hatch, then, you know, you're going to turn around and they're going to all have eaten each other. You only have a couple babies and that won't be very fun. So make sure you check on it every, you know, couple times a day and you're just preparing for the day that they're going to hatch. So now when your babies hatch, you have some options. So you'll see in the beginning, your babies will start coming out of the ooth, coming down like in little strands and they look almost like little like shrimps. It's an interesting sight, that's for sure, because they come up, they're all kind of like compacted before their legs and arms spread out and they actually kind of look like an actual mantis. But in the beginning, they kind of look like weird little shrimps and they will be very light in color. And this is because their exoskeleton has not hardened yet. This means like they're still fresh, they're newborns, they're soft. And at this point, you will not want to bother them. Do not bother them until you see the exoskeleton harden and you will know the difference. I can guarantee you, you will be able to tell once the exoskeleton has hardened and you're not dealing with a soft and um, unformed baby. So enjoy this moment, watch it, check it out, film it, put it on TikTok. Like it's gonna be awesome and exciting, but don't disturb them until their exoskeletons have hardened. 
So once this happens and you know you can see that they've started most likely to turn green or you know whatever color they're going to turn if they're Chinese mantis they will turn green you can go ahead and um, take action once they have hardened. So there are a couple choices that you have now. So you can either let them go, which is totally fine if you know you are sure that you are cleared to release this species, in which case go outside, take your cup out, open the lid and let them go. They might be a little bit tentative at first, but you know, you'll see them go out, it'll be fun and exciting and maybe you'll see them grow up and you'll have them in your garden later on in their lives. Another option, and this is what I did the first time I hatched out my mantis eggs, was I um, transferred them to a large mesh enclosure like this. I actually have some babies in here right now. I don't know if you can see. But I transferred the whole cup into an enclosure like this and let them all come out. This way there was more space. They weren't too crowded together because there will be a lot of babies in a cup this size very quickly. And like I said, they will cannibalize each other. So I moved them to a space like this where they had more space to spread out. And again, keep misting with water even after they're born, especially in a mesh container, daily misting will be appreciated. And then what I did next was I fed them and you'll wanna feed them because you don't want them to eat each other. You want them to eat something else other than each other. And at this point, pretty much your only option for food is going to be fruit flies. And fruit flies generally come in a culture. A culture is a product kind of like this. It has the food for the fruit flies, this um, material for them to climb in. And then it has adult fruit flies, which then mate, reproduce, have eggs, eggs hatch, they turn into flies and the life cycles kind of continue. Something like this is really nifty because it keeps producing fruit flies so you will have constant food for your little mantis babies for a good while. Something like this for a group of um, some newly hatched babies will probably last you for a couple weeks so that's pretty nifty. Um, you can purchase these at some pet stores. I do see them available at some Petco's and PetSmart's depending on if they have a reptile section. You will need to go to the reptile section, check where they have the little crickets and roaches and stuff like that and see if they have the cups of fruit flies. You can also check a specialized reptile store um, or you can also purchase online. I have purchased some fruit fly cultures from eBay, also Josh's Frogs. Um, I'm sure there's other places, but you're just looking for fruit flies for feeding purposes. Um, I've had people ask, can you feed them wild fruit flies? I guess you could. How you would catch them is beyond me, but you'll just want to make sure that anything that you're feeding to your baby mantises are pesticide free. No pesticides, because if the fly ate pesticides and your mantis eats the fly, the mantis will eat pesticides and it will not go well, so don't do that. But yes, I recommend just going ahead and if you're gonna keep the babies and you need to feed them so they don't eat each other, you're gonna get a fruit fly culture. You're gonna do it, it's the only way. So at that point, once you have transferred your babies into a large mesh container like this, or you've released them, you know, you can keep them together in a container like this for up to a few molts. You can probably safely do it through maybe their first two molts and you will have some casualties like if you're keeping them in a group container some will probably cannibalize but it should be kept to a minimum if they're still in their first one or two molts and you are feeding them regularly i would release fruit flies every day because you don't want them to eat each other so if you can put just a few fruit flies in there every day it will be awesome and helpful to prevent cannibalism which is bad time for everyone. I think that covers the general basis of hatching out your own praying mantis eggs. I think that kind of covers it. If you have any more questions, please let me know. I hope this was helpful because I know the first time I wanted to do this, I was very like confused. I didn't know what to do and I wanted to do a good job. So I had to look up a lot of information from different places and it was confusing, but I wanted to put it all together in one nice happy place and I hope you enjoy. Once your mantises have outgrown their little mesh and container, they've, you know, you can either let them go at that point or you can go ahead and separate them out and keep them forever. Keep them for their whole lives, you know, whatever makes you happy. 
but I really hope that you learned something. I was really excited to share this because it was a really fun experience for me when I did it. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you're watching, you're awesome and I appreciate you and you're great. I hope you subscribe and comment and tell your friends about my video. It would mean a lot to me. I am just a girl who loves my bugs and I appreciate everyone who watches and supports and stands by me. So I hope you have an awesome day and I keep hugging my shoulders up like this. I hope you have an awesome day and I hope that you are happy and doing well. Say bye. Say bye.